Hello and thanks for joining me for a quick chat on The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler, which is the most recent book that I finished in following this chat. I'll also touch base briefly on what I'm currently reading, as well as I'll do a drawing uh, to let the randomness of the universe choose uh, the next book off of my priority reading list, which I will be reading. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler. This was originally published in 1939. This is the first of the Philip Marlowe detective uh, novels, horrible detective novels, um, and I think I read, from what I could tell, I think I read an electronic edition of a 1988 edition, but I'm not real sure, couldn't really tell exactly, but yeah, The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler, I've been wanting to get into some hardball detective fiction since last year, um, a channel called Narla Knowledge Lost, um, did did some videos, did, did some chats around uh, hardball detective fiction as well as noir fiction, and it really sort of piqued my interest, and I had never read any of this genre, so um, I had actually meant to get to this last year during my uh, my free reading period, but ran out of time, as is often the case, so this year I decided to put it on my priority reading list, put a couple of these uh, hardball detective uh, works on my uh, must-read priority, read li priority reading list, and so just got to this one, and so glad that I did. I chose The Big Sleep uh, of all the Raymond Chandler novels. This is the first one, so it's the first of the Philip Marlowe, but um, The Big Sleep movie adaptation starring Humphrey Bogart and uh, Lauren Bacall is one of my all-time favorite movies the, the that movie is is awesome but the thing is it's got some plot twists so when you're watching the movie you get caught up in the whole noir um ambiance um and the plot's not necessarily really coherent but in the book uh it does follow the the movie version pretty well except the book is is much better at explaining uh, our plot because um there's some definitely some uh some subject matter that would have been uh, really hard to put on film in a movie back from the 1940s, uh, from the the Big Sleep with Humphrey Bogart and um, and Lauren Bacall. So I understand now why they needed to leave out those sections because it would not have worked in a movie of that time. But yeah, so what the book is about. Um, it's the main character is Philip Marlowe, uh, a private detective. Um, he is hired by General Sternwood, who is this old man, old, very ill man, who um, has two daughters. Um, both of the daughters are pretty fast. You know, they run pretty fast um, and they get into a lot of trouble. Uh, and one of the lines in, the, in, the, in this novel is, uh, this, is a, this is one of those families that things happen to. So his daughters are always getting into trouble and um, this is the case um, now. And so General Sternwood hires uh, Philip Marlowe, this private detective, to look into some issues with his daughter Carmen. His other daughter Vivian, it comes out was married to uh, had been married to a bootlegger named Rusty Regan um, and Rusty Regan just suddenly disappeared well the thing is the old man uh, General Sternwood was very attached to Rusty Regan and so while Philip Marlowe was not hired to find Rusty Regan it's a never it's a it's a uh, Rusty Regan is so, sort of a mystery that's within the mystery and um, so uh, Philip Marlowe finds himself Everyone thinks he's looking for Rusty Regan, um, and ultimately, you know, he does, kind of, in a roundabout way. Um, so yeah, uh, those are the main characters. Then we have some kind of hoods, thugs, and lowlifes. Um, Brody, Geiger, uh, who's the other one? Eddie Mars. So I'm not going to go into who these characters are, uh, other than they are crime figures. There's also a lot of, quite a few lesser characters who are sort of low, uh, small time, uh, two bit thugs or, you know, two bit hoods or whatever. Um, but, you know, this novel, um, really, uh, Philip Marlowe, uh, goes in search of, um, you know, uh, or, or he doesn't go in search, but he goes to try to take care of what he was hired to do by General Sternwood. But, you know, he under, he uncovers this world of, um, of uh, pornography, drugs, murder, blackmail, 
really the seedy side of 1939 Los Angeles. It takes place in Los Angeles, California. Um, you know, when I was writing out my, my thoughts about the book, the first thing that I wrote down was atmospheric because this had a real atmosphere to it. Um, you know, and I think this is what this genre is known for, right? Um, and it, it really did translate. The novel was, um, you know, I really had this sort of noirish um, 1939 L.A. kind of atmosphere, really, really crackling dialogue. Um, a lot of the action takes place at night and in the rain, and so it, it has that that atmosphere uh, to it. Um, like I mentioned in the book, as opposed to the movie, the book version does uh, explain the plot holes that are in the movie version pretty well. Um, because of the, uh, you know, the, the the different things that, like I mentioned, that had to be left, left out of the movie, obviously like pornography, a pornography ring. Although this is actually alluded to pretty strongly in the movie version. So even watching the movie, I knew that's what was going on, but it wasn't real explicit. And it's a bit more explicit in the, um, in the book, um, you know, obviously. So um, the... I mentioned Philip Marlowe as the main character. You know, he is this hero, anti-hero, really an anti-hero, I think. You know, he's this um, kind of no-nonsense um, man, but yet honorable man. And there's a quote from the book that I think just really explains this character really well. Just to set up this quote, uh, I thought I'd read the quote. What it is, a woman is actually trying to seduce him. Um, and she, he comes home to his apartment to find her there um, in a very sort of compromising state. And she just kind of assumes, I think, that he's going to, um, uh, you know, fall for her seduction. Because I think she's had a lot of success with this in the past, <laughs> judging from her, uh, what we know of her character. So, um Anyway, he turns her down flat, and that does not make her very happy. So that's sort of setting up this quote. But this quote really explains, I think it really illustrates um, this sort of Philip Marlowe, this sort of anti-hero. So um, uh, here is the quote. The hissing noise came tearing out of her mouth as if she had nothing to do with it. There was something behind her eyes, blank as they were, that I had never seen in a woman's eyes. Then her lips moved very slowly and carefully, as if they were artificial lips and had to be manipulated with springs. She called me a filthy name. I didn't mind that. I didn't mind what she called me, what anybody called me. But this was the room I had to live in. It was all I had in the way of a home. In it was everything that was mine, that had, had any association for me, any past, anything that took the place of a family. Not much. A few books, pictures, radio, chessmen, old letters, stuff like that. Nothing. Such as they were, uh, such as they were, they had all my memories. I couldn't stand her in that room any longer. What she called me only reminded me of that. So, you know, um, it, I just love that that quote. But this this book is really filled with this kind of dialogue. Really, really. Um, um, I don't know, something about it, really sort of earthy, really sort of um, no, no nonsense, um, something um, heroic in a way, but not in a typical hero kind of fashion. Philip Marlowe is, I think, an honorable and he, you know, honorable person for the most part, uh, but he's a flawed person, and he has this, he has this sort of underside as well. Um, as all the characters do, uh, and I think that's sort of maybe, uh, this is the first of the genre that I've read, so I can't really speak to the entire genre, but that sort of seemed to be, um, you know, really where the book was, was trying, what the book was trying to, to show me, other than to solve this, this mystery, a couple, several mysteries actually, uh, but in, in, in between there, it was also showing this sort of seedy underside of life, how the characters are all imperfect people. Um, some are imperfect yet good. Um, some do bad things, but yet they're good people. Some are bad people and do bad things, and some are bad people that bad things happen to. Um, so, you know, but it really just shows that sort of, this sort of uh, sort of a uh, maybe the 
you know, another, the other side of the hidden part of life uh, of, of these people's lives. And, you know, it takes place in L.A., like I said, in, the, in like 1939. So this is this era of L.A. when the, the police force is also this flawed institution um, that has its uh, honorable side as well as its co more corrupt side as well. So, um, you know, I really enjoyed reading this book. I do have another uh, hard-boiled uh, detective story on my priority reading list that I haven't gotten to yet. I w uh, it's Malsey's Falcon by Dashiell Hammett, so that will be coming up in the future with the future drawing. Um, so, but I'm glad to read that, but I definitely want to read the rest of the Philip Marlowe detective uh, novels now that I've read this one. Um, this one's actually not one of the considered one of the better ones. So um, if this one's not considered one of the better ones, I'm really interested to read the rest of them. So that will be coming up in the future for me, uh, for sure. So what I am currently reading, let me just pull it up for you um, here, um, if I can, fairly quickly, the cover. I'm reading The Coming of the Third Reich by Richard J. Evans. This is volume one of a three-volume history of Nazi Germany. This has been so good. It's been so easy to read. I mean, it's pretty uh, in-depth. It's uh, about maybe 460-something pages um, in this first volume, but I have kind of gone through it fairly quickly. Very informative. I've, I'll have a more detailed chat on it coming up for sure, uh, but so glad that I'm getting this read. Um... And I should be finished with it fairly soon. I have, I think, around 100 pages left, so I should be finished in the next day or two. So on to what my next read is going to be. So back to my drawings. It's been a while since I've done my drawings, so I'm really curious what my next read is going to be. Let's just choose this one. Um, it is going to be New Finnish Grammar. New Finnish Grammar. Let me, um, I, mean, I don't know if I'll be able to, find the cover for this really quickly, but I will try. Um, let me see. New Finnish Grammar. Of course, that's the one I'm not finding easily. Oh, there it is. Here we go. There's the, there, there's the cover. Um, it's by Diego Morani. Um, this, uh, let me read the, um, see if I can find the, um, the blurb for it real quick. And I'll just read the blurb rather than try to go by my memory about the details of what it's for, what it's about. Um, One night at Trieste in September 1943, a seriously wounded soldier is found on the quay. The doctor of a newly arrived German hospital ship, Pietri Friari, gives the unconscious soldier medical assistance. His new patient has no documents or anything that can identify him. When he regains consciousness, he has lost his memory and cannot even remember what language he speaks. From a few things found on the man, the doctor, who is originally from Finland, believes him to be a sailor and a fellow countryman who somehow or other has ended up in Trist. The doctor dedicates himself to teaching the man Finnish, beginning the reconstruction of the identity of Sampo Karjalanian, leading the missing man to return to Finland in search of his identity and his past. So I thought this was kind of cool. It fit into my priority re uh, fit into my priority reading criteria of um, identity, uh, which was a re reading theme I had for this year. And this, I thought this might be uh, sort of pertain to uh, you know uh, language and identity, how language sort of helps define who we are. Um, so this is a work of fiction uh, that explores that topic. So that will be my read following the, when I finish up The Coming of the Third Reich, which I should have a book chat coming up on fairly soon. I also have an opera chat. Uh, I saw Candide by Leonard Bernstein um, a couple of nights ago, so I'll have an opera chat coming up fairly soon. So stay tuned for that. Take care. Bye.